Hello, I'm Ryan Ziegler, and I'd like to talk to you about the impact of the US-China trade war and US interest rates on copper prices. Of all base metals, copper has been the best barometer of uh, the state of the US-Chinese trade talks. If you look at chart one, you can see that copper's rallied uh, into the start of each of the round of talks since 2018, and then fallen back as each set of talks so far failed to produce a desired result. This weekend sees the latest uh, talks take place at the G20, but many metal watchers don't expect to result this time either. China has taken a tougher stance in the last few months and can still play the rare earths card and also isn't tied to a NOV 2020 election date. On the US side, without the US-Mexican uh, war and with an eye on next year's US election, there might be a preference to stretch this into next year and then try to win a trade war over China in the immediate run-up to NOV 2020. If the trade war is over too soon, what's going to capture the electorate's imagination until next year? Many hope it won't be Iran. If we look at chart two, it shows how equities have also been hit by trade war fears, but they've responded more enthusiastically than copper to Fed suggestions that rates might be cut in June, regaining their highs. Fed rate policy used to be determined by unemployment and inflation, but perhaps since Alan Greenspan's tenure in the 1990s, it appears that equity market valuation also plays a large part in Fed thinking. This makes sense because more than any other country, the financial well-being of the US can be measured by the health of the stock market. Ever since the wider population embraced equity-based personal pensions in the late 1980s, early 1990s. If we go to chart three, it shows how Fed funds in the 1990s may have reflected concerns over equity market levels. At the very start of the decade, Rates were coming off post the Japanese asset crash and rates started to rise in 1994 uh, as the US led the global economy higher. At the same time, uh, commodities were bought by uh, hedge funds as an inflation hedge. By the mid-90s, mid uh, people were worried about um, the level of equity uh, valuation and Alan Greenspan was warning of irrational exuberance by 96, late 96, early 97, but was prevented from raising rates by the Asian crisis, Russia debt crisis and LTCM collapse. Finally raising rates in 1999 and uh, 2000, that popped the dot-com bubble and then rates were cut rapidly from 6.5% in January 2001 down to 3.5% by 9-11 and then post 9-11 they were cut again um, and finally reaching 1% by 2003. Now that uh, did prevent an equity market collapse um, but it also laid the foundations for the problems in the last decade, if we go to chart four, we can see that um, with the low interest rates, it allowed the uh, housing uh, bubble to uh, develop and also uh, yield hungry investors search for exotic debt solutions. And um, that created the subprime, subprime uh, crisis, which burst in uh, 2008. Um, and then since 2008, we had about eight years of effectively zero rates and QE, allowing the global economy and asset valuations to recover. In 2015-2016, uh, the Fed started to ratchet rates up slowly and currently with rates at 2.5%, it does allow the Fed some limited room to cut uh, if they really have to. It's unlikely though that um, they're going to cut in, with current uh, equities performing so strongly, so it might take an equity collapse to see a Fed rate cut to uh, rescue equity market and also feed into copper prices. So for copper bulls, um, come back to uh, copper, for copper bulls, uh, we don't expect too much out of the uh, G20 this weekend and um, we also don't expect an equity, uh, uh, unless we see an equity market collapse, we don't as, uh, expect to see an interest rate cut to restore the market. Copper bulls might have to wait longer for a much longer for copper bull run. Uh, thank you for listening and happy trading.